This is a video about making an inexpensive 70 pound laminated English long bow. I, I started about a year and a half ago making bows and I want to get to the point where I can make a bow out of you and have it be a fairly heavy draw bow. This is my first attempt at a bow that's, that's fairly heavy to draw. It pulls about 73 pounds at 28 inches and it actually works pretty well. I also learned a lot about making heavier bows that I didn't realize when, when I've been making 30 or 40 or 45 pound bows. This bow is going to be made out of hickory wood and bamboo. I got the dimensions for making long bows that would be about 60 pounds. And I set it up. I got the bamboo and the hickory from Ringing Rocks Archery in Pennsylvania. Weighed everything out, get the bamboo, mark up the hickory, belly of the bow. I'm going to make the bamboo the back and epoxy it to the, the hickory stave. I use West Marine G-Flex epoxy resin, spread it on fairly thin, put the pieces together clamp it down tightly. I used as many clamps as I had, plus um, I used plastic wrap and rope and tied it tightly, bound it up, hoping that would make it um, laminated a little bit better. It seemed to, to work okay. After letting it dry for about 24 hours, you take all the clamps off, all the plastic off, you end up with a stave where the bamboo is slightly wider than the hickory. The hickory is supposedly an inch and a half wide. The bamboo is supposedly an eighth, eighth of an inch thick, but you can see it varies quite a bit in thickness. It also has the nodes that stick up, which you don't really want to sand down. So the first step is to take a draw knife. This is an Ochsenkopf, uh, German-made draw knife. It has a blade that's kind of chisel-shaped, maybe not the best for doing fine work. It's not like a, a razor-thin knife, but it cuts through the bamboo really easily. A lot of people say bamboo is hard to work with, but I thought the bamboo was, was actually pretty easy to work with. And here you can see the draw knife cuts through it with no problem. Doesn't make splinters down into the wood. And I want to clean off all of the bamboo so it's level with the regular wood. And then take a rasp and clean off any of the epoxy that's on the surface. So when I start trying to dig into the wood and shape it, the epoxy doesn't cause the draw knife to bounce on the surface of the wood. So the first step was to get the bamboo evened up. And here you see I've, I've turned it over and looking the other side of it. I get it fairly evened off. I'm going to switch to using a short form rasp. I'll smooth it down the rest of the way so that it's the bamboo and the hickory wood are even. I also start taking off any of the extra epoxy and throwing it onto the surface of the hickory. You can't see very well because of the lighting here, but the shipboard mask actually picks up the epoxy, scrapes it off pretty nicely. And so I keep breaking it down. It actually takes a fair amount of time to do this. And when I 
to get done, it looks like this. You can see I've laid out the the belly of the bow. It's laying on its side now, and I'm going to start thinning down the wood with the draw knife. You can see the lines I've made. I'm going to thin down to about a sixteenth of an inch with the draw knife to get there. So when you start with the draw knife, you start at the end where you take off the most wood. You also want to experiment with the grain direction to see which way it's easiest to take off the wood without causing problems. As I worked with it, I got a little bit better than what I'm showing here. Is if you pull the draw knife at about a 45 degree angle with respect to the axis of the wood pointing towards you, and alternate back and forth, it's easier to take off small amounts. You only want to take off an, an inch or two, or maybe three at the most at a time, or else you can pull up great big splinters of the wood, which isn't, isn't what you want to do. Also, once you get the hang of shaping the bow, you can tilt the draw knife more than an angle so you're actually rounding while, while you're shaping down. But you have to be a, a bit more uh, careful as you do that because it's hard to make get the um, dimensions right as, as you thin it down. So for me, it's easiest to square it down and then worry about rounding it. So here you can see I've gotten a little bit further down. And I got so I would, could get within about a 16th inch of my guidelines with the draw knife without causing too much trouble. I like to use hand tools for the whole process. You know, I know people like use woodworking tools, bandsaws, and grinders, and shapers, and belt sanders, and drum sanders, but I, I like just to use hand tools. It, it makes it more of an authentic project to me for learning how to do it. As you can see here, at the far end of the, the bow there, there was a place where the wood gouged down a little bit. If you look at the grain, as I go down and across it, the grain's pretty straight actually looked pretty good, but when I started getting into working the bow, I noticed there's a section here where the grain kind of dives in, in a wave. You see the wave starting here. There's the, the crest of the wave and it drops out. And where that little bump is, it made the um, wood pull up differently. And then there's another wave right at the tip, and it made the wood pull up differently. So I was a little bit concerned about that that maybe the bow well, would break and not be very strong. Oh, so when I laid it out, you can see I've, I've laid it out so that those areas are, are going to be removed and hopefully it, it won't be an issue. Here it is after I've shaped down the belly of the bow quite a bit. You see it's almost done being square, square shaped down with the draw knife and the sure-form rasp. See from the side here, I'm almost to the, the guidelines. I'll, I'll take it down a little bit more with the rasp, but it doesn't have to be perfect because you're, you're going to round, round it off. But the closer it is to perfect, the less problems you'll have with the, the bow wanting to pull strangely when you tiller it, or uh, to have the limbs um, pull crookedly. Here it is, you can see I've started rounding it with a regular rasp. Actually, it's a four-way rasp that I use. I also use sandpaper quite a bit at this point. So it's, it's rounded mostly with the sure form rasp, four-way rasp, and sandpaper. It's kind of hard to see in the light here how it's, it's rounded down to the D shape. So I threw in some pictures from uh, pictures taken inside in different light. You can see it's rounded, and you can see it's pretty healthy thickness to the bow. The next step was putting on some, some tip overlays. And I, I, glued, I epoxied them on, and they're quite big to start with. 
marked where I, I think the string will go, and eventually this is what they'll look like after I, I've worked on them quite a bit. But just to get started for um, tillering the bow, I just sanded them down a little bit at first. I think you can see in pictures here when I'm, I'm working with a long string tiller, and just started pulling the bow to see how it was going, going to pull. You see here, I'm working the bow. Each time I take wood off as I'm tillering it, I, I pump it about 80 times, actually, because it's a very strong bow, and I wanted to make sure it would bend carefully. As I, I was doing this, the usual strings I used to tool the bow were actually stretching quite a bit. So to get the um, wings moving 7 inches, which I do before I next to the, move to the next stage of tillering, the string was stretching quite a ways. And it was pulling about 80 or 90 pounds, as you can see here, to move the limbs seven inches. So when I put it on a low brace, the string was slightly off center, as I tried to illustrate quickly here. So what I had to do is take off a little bit of wood at the handle and um, make the knocks on one side a little bit deeper, and, and I started moving the string towards the center. Then at a very low brace, I start pulling on it very gently seeing how it's going to bend. I, I try to use uh, pictures more than just looking at the bow because it's, it's kind of hard to see what's happening when you're standing up close to it. And then I, I mark out where the wood needs to, to come down a little bit and I take it off a little bit at a time, mostly with sandpaper at this point, to um, make sure that I'm not going to get a weak bow by taking off too much wood. Then I finally moved to um, a different string so I could get a, a fairly decent brace on it. You notice the right side needed some work. Here it is while I'm still working on it a little bit, but it's getting pretty close to where I want it. And then when I can pull the bow about 20 inches, I, I start shooting arrows. I shoot about 50 arrows at it and then finish off the, the tiller. And then when I finished off with, with this string that I could actually pull it with, it measured 73 pounds. I, I put the finish on it, made a leather handle for it. You can see it's strung up here. It's actually, the wood's kind of pretty if you can see it up close. There's the finished off tip inlays, overlays, excuse me. Um, the handle, you can see that I've just barely polished off the bumps or nodes in the bamboo, but you don't want to ruin the nodes. There you can see the, the tip overlays, which I think are a bit thick. And I've left the tips quite thick because I didn't want to have problems with the um, bowstring not being centered. Gives you an idea what it looks like when it's strung up. So the one thing I learned is that making a heavier bow, it's awfully hard to work with, and you need to get strings that will actually take the tension of pulling at 80 pounds or 90 pounds, which a lot of bowstring material will stretch, and that can be difficult. And so I don't pull it quite 28 inches, and it shoots about 70 pounds for me, which is kind of dangerous in my backyard, actually but it's um, actually pretty fun to make and a pretty decent bow.